What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the Turn the Jets podcast. I'm your host, Will Parkinson, at WillPod11 on Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, uh, Will Parkinson NFL on YouTube. Um, always have to plug the YouTube channel. People have been requesting it forever, and I finally dove into it. YouTube is a cesspool, but appreciate everybody that goes on there and listens and comments. Um, Michael Meeg on the on the pod today. Meeks, we are doing a home and home. Just uh, talked a little draft season. Brock Bowers, pick ten, pick seventy three, uh, quarterback in round four, things of that nature. So make sure you guys check out check that out. Um, only one episode this week from the TOJ pod, and then we'll have TOJ talks on on Saturday, and then we'll be full throttle three episodes a week, um, pretty much until uh, until the summer. And then it'll probably still be three episodes a week somehow. Um, Meeks, we're gonna do a little. Got some like 14 or 15 uh, rapid fire, you know, Q&A questions. Let's rip through those first. How we doing? How we feeling? Um, I don't know if I did that right. You know, I have to mimic Joe's how we doing, how we feeling. But how we doing, Meeks? Feeling good. You know, kind of want the draft to happen. Excited to answer the questions. I'm sure we're going to get, you know, some nice discourse going. We'll have maybe, maybe we'll agree, maybe we'll disagree. So I'm just really excited to get it rolling. Yeah, no, me too. So let's get started. Um Let's get started with a couple of free agency ones, and I'll try to move into the draft ones. Um, who on this team? I guess this isn't really a free agency one, but who on this team from Chris Roland, I Chris Rabby Blast EM, whatever I don't, I don't know how to pronounce his Twitter name, but who on this team this year will has the who will take or has the potential to take the Quincy Williams jump to an All Pro level season in twenty twenty four? I'll let you start, and then I'll uh, I'll roll with it. I mean, I think the easy answer, and it's it's probably cheating is Garrett because he'll actually get good quarterback play. He has 2000 yard years. He hasn't been like, like Garrett great player has not been like all pro receiver, like good yet, which is partly to like, he's still developing his player probably due to this quarterback situation. But if you're looking for someone who can have like CD lambs year was so ridiculous last year that that's very like high standards. But like if Garrett Wilson is 1500 yards, I don't think anyone should be surprised. And I think he's the one who's going to, benefit the most from what the Jets have done on offense this offseason. This is also cheating. I think it's Brees Hall, and I think there's a really good shot he wins Offensive Player of the Year. Um, I think I, I said with Jason McCourty on Saturday's episode, like if he's the top five finisher in Offensive Player of the Year, is anybody surprised? Probably not. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, he's never made a Pro Bowl. He's never made an, uh, you know, an, all, uh, an All-Pro team. He's never been Player of the Month, I'm, if I'm not mistaken. Like, he's not won any of these awards, and – I still think people are like, oh, the Jets suck. So, Brees Hall is cool, but, like, you know, we saw the one Brees Lightning thing, and then he tore his ACL, and Stephen A. Smith still thinks his ACL is torn and, and the whole thing. I just think with Brees, it's like Quincy was really fun and exciting uh, in 2022. He still had made some mistakes, and the Jets weren't good. Last year, he came out firing. It was obviously amazing, and was ended up being all pro. So, I'll, I'll go Brees Hall there. I think both answers are probably cheating. If I wanted to go outside the box, I'd say, I guess, Jermaine maybe is somebody that, like, takes the year three in the system leap and as a defensive guy, but I don't, I don't know the Jermaine. Yeah, it's either him or pro level. I, mean, I don't want to say this. Well, not that I would love for it to happen. It's just like the, the man's played, I think 13 games in two years. AVT is also an answer for this. Yeah. But like if he's just fully healthy, if he's just fully healthy, he's playing one position. He knows he's playing right guard. The offensive line stays relatively healthy where he doesn't have to move from right guard. And he gets played next to a veteran stall where Light Morgan Moses and Titman is, you know, a steady presence at center. That's probably the best incubation, like who he's played with. Like kind of feels like everything could come together for him next year. Davy Knuckles, can I have some money? No. Um <laughs> someone asked, signing Ashton Davis would be great. What's the whole what's the holdup? Looks like Beckton is close to signing with Dallas based on his market. He's probably getting a league minimum. What is his mood? Uh, he had high expectations coming to free agency. Has to be disappointed with lack of the demand. I'll start with this one. Um, Mikai Becton's had an interest in suitors. You know, you heard the combine things like Cincinnati, Dallas, Green Bay, other places. He's a talented guy. He was a former first round pick and had some really good tape in year one and had some okay tape at points this year. Um, he's missed two full seasons. Um, sometimes mentally not the most locked in. Um, and his body's, and he's just, I don't know if he's the same athlete he was three years ago, pre multiple reconstructive knee surgeries at points. So I'm not surprised. I don't think it'll be the vet minimum. Um, I think there'll be more than that. I think probably be one for five with upside to 10. If he, he plays well, Ashton Davis, the holdup is he wants to start. And I don't think that 
he probably thinks he's going to start here. Um, and that's probably why. And I also think teams know that they have to wait 18 days and they won't gift the Jets a comp pick, which we talked about, uh, whether it's Lawson or Davis or somebody else signing elsewhere. The Jets will get a fourth round comp pick next year for Bryce Hoff. So I think that's the Davis and Becton thing. Do you, do you feel any differently about either of those two? No, like I said, I just think Becton isn't the same, like said, like you said, the same athlete he was. And, you know, I think there's effort issues. I think there's commitment issues to how locked in he's going to be. And teams are going to know that, like, you know, the Jets don't, they're not protecting an asset anymore. He's gone. Like, people talk. People ask around. Yeah, I was going to say, people talk, people ask around. Yeah. Um, this is a yeah. fun one. I, I guess we'll go, hard, man, I'm trying to see if I can say it. There's a lot of draft questions. Uh, this one from Jim Jets. Uh, we done in free agency until after the draft. You think who else could we add? I don't know if they're done. I would say they're probably done until, you know, post draft. That said, um, you know, I, I think a lot of these guys, if you're a vet, like, why would you want to sign right now? Yeah. You have to, why, like, if you're Dalvin Cook, for whatever you want to, we know, like, he was doing an interview and a lot of the stuff is classic Dalvin Cook, but he did say something that is very true. I want to see how the chips fall before I go and sign with the team. Um, if you're David Bakhtiari, why, if the Jets go draft a left tackle, in what world are you coming to the Jet? <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? Like, turf, turf aside. Uh, so, uh, to me, I think these guys can avoid off-season workouts. They can avoid having to be in the building. They can go train with their own trainers and train off to the side. Quan Alexander did it a couple years ago when he signed with the Jets. Like, that's what this, that's what's going to happen now. That's why it was shocking Jadavian Clowney signed when he did. Um, I, I think they're probably – mostly done though until after the draft i would say there's two weeks till the draft people are locked in and a lot of these vets are you know jets are gonna have voluntary workouts here in in a, in a week and a half like i i wouldn't be rushing back into the building if i was a vet yeah no i don't think they're really gonna sign anyone you, like i said i think dobbins is maybe something that happens after the draft or insert veteran running back here after the draft i think the free agent jets fans are keeping the most attention to because i wouldn't fully rule it out is justin simmons but it looks like if justin simmons hadn't signed now why would he? Why wouldn't he sign till like June or May? Yeah, no, a hundred percent. I think the other one is is MVS. I still don't think that's totally out of the question. Um, but I guess again, if they draft a pass catcher at ten, probably less likely. If they waited till seventy three, do you want more of a veteran presence early in the year? That could make some sense. Um, we'll move to these are mostly drafts, so we'll move to this one. This is an interesting one from Finnegan's Flight Crew. Hardest player to get a read on in the twenty twenty four draft. Mary Smims. I doesn't have a lot of, doesn't have a lot of tape. Incredibly freaky athlete. Has played right tackle, has played left tackle, trained on both sides. If he hits, he's a all pro level talent. But is he gonna hit? I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I'll go. Uh, this is an interesting question. I'm trying to think if I can like roll out. Jackson Powers Johnson seems to be one that people are having a tough time getting a read on. I left Mobile and said he's a surefire top twenty-five pick. This dude was amazing, and then I I've seen multiple Lance Zerline, Brett Coleman, other folks said, "Oh, he's not a first-round player." That's what I'm hearing. He's a second-round type of buzz. I'm only saying from a read perspective is people are seeing something I'm not, or, and I haven't seen, and that makes me think: Do I have to rewatch him? Like, did I miss something here? Was it just a really good week in Mobile? He's a massive dude, like. I think he's a much better prospect than Tippman was, and Tippman went top whatever forty, whatever he went. So he went like forty four, I think. Yeah, 40, yeah, forty four. I think it's medical whatever. for JPJ to be honest with you. I don't think it's talent. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's hard to get a, him, and then the other one I'll go with a hard to get a read on. Tavondre Sweat is one of the most like I don't understand because the tape's amazing, but everything else screams like this is a problem. You got the, what do you get a DUI a week ago? Um, he didn't weigh in a mobile. He clearly played overweight, but then he tested amazing and lost all the weight and he was fine, but he missed his combine podium multiple times. Uh, it was just, if he's there at 73, I'm still probably taking him. Yeah, <laughs> all that said, him. him and him next to Q and, and Reddick and Jermaine or JFM and base downs would be, yeah, it'd be nuts. Work. It'd be nuts. Um, we'll, we'll move on to, uh, Gus T O O N asked if we could trade down and still realistically take Bowers in an offensive tackle, how far down do you have to go? And what do you think would still be available? Um, I, I think if Bowers doesn't go 10 or 15, as you mentioned, he's probably falling to like 
low, late teens, maybe 20. Yeah, I would say like 20 um, Yeah, so I guess you could trade down. Cincinnati's probably the spot. Mm-hmm. I just don't think you want to go further in that. I think the draft starts to get really similar at, at that point. Um, I don't know how they're going Bowers in a tackle. I assume you need a second-round tackle because otherwise I don't I, – yeah. they're not getting two first-round picks for 10 overall. Unfortunately and not. Especially not two first-round picks this year. Um, yeah. They're not getting like – they're not getting 11 and 23 from Minnesota. So I, I'm not sure. Uh, I'm not sure on that one. This one's interesting. Uh, good friend, obviously, of the show and former uh, was a trainer when I was playing at, playing at Taos. And Caleb, uh, Caleb asks, who are your pro comps for the top three receivers in this draft? I'll, let, I'll, I'll defer to you to start with this one. Uh, Marv, which this one actually annoys me that people don't think this is good enough. Marv is A.J. Green. A.J. Green was Awesome. Anyone who says like that's not a good enough player, AJ Green should be in the Hall of Fame. That's one of like the five best receivers I've watched in my entire life. AJ Green. Neighbors, Jetpack, Brandon Ayuk. And Rome. People throw out Keenan Allen. I just think Rome's like bigger and like he's just more of an outside threat. Um Rome's the harder one because it's not T, it's not Mike Williams, and he's not as big as Mike Evans. So it's more to looking for just like that standard, like really solid X. Like, I don't think there's like a perfect Rome comp that's in the NFL like today. So that's where I show you he's more of a throwback comp that I have to get. Yeah. I'll co- come back to me with Rome. But yeah, that the, the two, I feel very good about Neighbors and Marv. You know what? Rome's been getting a lot of pro comps of, mm-hmm. and he's a former. Aaron Rodgers probably best ever target. Well, you get Chris. You, you, you seen any? You seen any Devonte? No, Devonte. I, 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 I don't know why. I've seen it on Bleacher That's Report. Right. I've seen it on Walter Football. I, I saw it on the ESPN thing. Right no, like not defense their own. Like I yeah, don't I, I don't know. I don't know if I see Devonte because that means he's yeah. the best receiver in football in four years. But like maybe. Um, <laughs> Again, he's not Brandon Marshall, so I'm just like putting that there. But yeah, he's not big enough. But I feel like the play strength in which he plays through the catch point is very Brandon Marshall like in terms of like it's any 50 50 is 70 30 minimum when you're talking Roman. I'm not just talking like contested catch jump balls. I'm talking like over the talking balls over the middle. I'm talking late hands where like it's a ball that probably could be 50 50 with like a good corner and it like becomes a better thing. Um, in terms of, in terms of neighbors, uh, I like the Brandon cook, the jetpack Brandon cooks one, uh, DJ Moore. Um, I've he seen some, I think Connor, him. I think the, I wonder like Diggs is probably not the correct comparison, but I yeah, feel like the size wise is like, I, that, there's that, that, that receipt that six foot receiver at 190, 200 pounds just feels like six foot, six one. Um, is there a little Odell there? Yeah, well, I think the funny thing is like he's a lot like Chase, but he's not Chase at the catch point. And yeah. that's where and which is what makes Chase Chase. That's why I don't put that comp on him. But like neighbors is impossible to tackle. You can run as many slot vertical routes as you want, and he will cook because of it. But at the catch point, he's just not as strong and he's just not as reliable as Chase was. And then Marv, look, <laughs> I think there's a lot of different comparisons. Again, I don't think he's Julio, but if, you told, me was, if you told me he ended up being Julio Jones, like I wouldn't tell you you're crazy. No. Um, I like the AJ Green one. I think he's a little bit more – I don't know if it was just because AJ Green was so quiet, like literally like so, so quiet that – it, it just felt like that. Oh, the other one for Rome that's interesting was like a little DeAndre ish, De- a little D hop, yeah, similar size, not, similar size. That's not bad. Andre Johnson isn't bad either, but Andre Johnson is a little bit of a ceiling comp for Rome. I'm, I'll never comp anyone Andre Johnson. Yeah, that's my Andrew, guy. Yeah, he's a good player. And, until yeah. until I start seeing <laughs> Roma Dunes beating the shit out of people uh, yeah. with his fists, then no one has as deep a voice as Andre Johnson. Just uh, just beat the shit out of Court and Finnegan. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, but it would be it would be good. Um, let's move on to the next one. My guy Dom uh, DC underscore NY Jets. Adding a player to the safety room is still a need, in my opinion. If the Jets don't address with a veteran, which way would you lean in the draft, and how high of a pick would you waste? Uh, we referenced this a little bit on draft season. I'll start here, and I'll defer to Meeks on more of the prospects um, in terms of that. I think the third or fourth round, maybe even in the fifth round is where you take that shot. Probably not at pick 73. It's probably more pick 111, 134, and then I – whatever the next one is, 160 or 170-something. 
that's probably the range in which you do it. Um, it's not a great safety class. I'd much prefer the Jets to go the veteran route, especially in this defense where I kind of feel like you kind of want a guy that can just seamlessly come in. And like Tony Adams is a guy that kind of redshirted and I thought he had a, Tony Adams actually, I thought had a nice year. I just don't think mm-hmm. he can be your best safety. I think if he's your second, probably the worst player in your defense, like you have a pretty good defense, um, obviously. So um, I, I think round four or five is probably the sweet spot for safety. Um, like the kid out of Wake Forest. Um, I know people like the kid out of Utah, uh, Baki. Like I, uh, I'm not going to go the USC route with uh, with my boy. But um, is there any other safeties near you that like in that four, round four or five range that, that kind of stand 